So, I was at my local hobby shop, and I saw that he had a couple of these new cars from Horizon Hobbies, and so I picked up this, I guess it's Vetera Camora, and uh, it's like a 114 scale uh, four-wheel drive rally car. Uh, it looks, it's a really nice looking car. Um, I love this packaging. Everything's done really well here. Um, it, on the back there's a diagram of the car there. Um, it uses the Spectrum system. Um, comes with a nice like pilot guy to put in the car if you want. Yeah, you can take this out. It, it does have four wheel drive. Um, great looking suspension. Everything looks like it's designed real well on this car. Uh, these run for $200 from Horizon Hobby. If you go to your local hobby shop, you should be able to get it for less than $200. Um, but I think that's a fair price. It's a nice little car. These manuals from Horizon stuff is usually pretty good. Um, there's explanations of everything in here that you need to know and a quick start guide if you just want to charge and go drive. Um, but I, I would suggest reading some of the information, um, you know, about how to maintain the car and stuff. Um, how to improve run times, um, how to keep a car clean. If this is your first car, um, I strongly suggest reading this stuff because there's some maintenance that you can do that will keep your car running right. Um, you're going to get this thing dirty and you're going to go through dirt and crap and that gets stuck in, in places. And if you don't know where to clean, um, it can be a little difficult to keep your car running right. Uh, the manual, again, is in... English, German, um, French, and Italian, and I just don't understand why there's no Spanish. So it's pretty nice the way they set up this box. Um, it looks great on the shelf, and in the front part of the box, when you first open it, is all your stuff. You know, your radio and your charger and all that is in this box here. So, like I said, it comes with this DX2 radio, um, and this is a Spectrum 2.4 gigahertz standard radio. Um, you could probably use this with another car, but this is kind of a cheap transmitter. It's a good one to get started with if you're new to cars or something. Um, this would be a great radio to get started with. I like the fact that it doesn't have the big foldable antenna that you have to unfold and stuff. That's nice, and it it has the basic settings that you need to tune up your car and make it run right, but it doesn't have model memories or anything like that. So that's the radio you get. It's pretty nice. It's got a smooth trigger. The wheel feels pretty good. It's a lot like my DX3, pretty much the same. So that's good quality stuff. All right, in the little box, there's your main battery that's the battery for the car it's a it's a 7.2 volt uh, NICAD battery and you can run a two cell lipo battery on this car and that would be fine as well um, and there is a three cell lipo upgrade but you need to change the gearing uh, on the motors before you do that got some of these cheap batteries for your transmitter. It, in my experience, these last a good long time, so go ahead and use these for your first run. Um, and I don't know if you can use rechargeable batteries, but I think you can. In here also is, these are your little spacers for your shocks. You can use these to add tension to the springs. So you slide these in and it push, compresses the spring a little bit. Um, we've got, looks like some new gears for the clutch that probably wears out and needs to be replaced so they've given you a couple here and then you always get a wheel wrench this would be for taking your wheels putting your wheels on and off and then there's some small tools like an allen wrench and this is for adjusting the turnbuckles and uh, stuff on the suspension and steering and this little wrench there as well so the last thing in the box, it's kind of hard to get out, I had to kind of push it through the bottom, but this is going to be your charger. So we're going to take and set that up 
and get the battery to charge in while we look at the car. Here's our charger that comes with this and it does have a uh, an AC plug so you can plug it into the wall and so out at the field if you're needing to charge you're probably gonna want to buy something else uh, or get some kind of adapter that'll work off a car battery or something like that um, but yeah this is pretty easy to use you just hook it together and uh, when you when you charge it's pretty obvious the instructions are right here so there's the car itself and it comes in this little sub box inside there and it is tied down so you're gonna have to get some zip tie cutters or something to carefully remove that all right sorry about the mess I bought this car I'm in the middle of a bunch of projects so uh, you get my dirty workbench um, yeah there it is it's very nice it looks really nice it has a great look to it um, and I like this color scheme it's it's a little darker than some of the other stuff that I drive a lot of cars are like one color and stuff so I like this two-tone with kind of the white and the black um, looks real nice it's it's pretty flexy in some parts but I can tell that this is going to be fine for rollovers and stuff you crash on the ceiling of it it's going to be fine right that's really strong stuff so this is a good canopy it's going to protect everything inside really well um, let's take these off so an overview of the car real quick there's the speed controller wired up to the motor there um, there's your steering servo your spectrum receiver is down here and this hole that's open is for your bind plug so if you need to bind it use this stick the bind plug in there and bind the receiver it should be bound already um, but if it's not you may have to rebind um, so there's where the battery goes right there and uh, our battery's charged so let's go grab that this battery box is a really tight fit and uh, there's only one spot where it's kind of lower so that the cords can come out and I might actually cut that corner away a little bit because the battery when you push it down that corner is is hitting the the battery but just be real careful when you stick your battery in and make sure you can get the clips all the way down and this thing all the way down in so that you can get the little clip in and then that'll at least keep it from falling out and then you want to wire out the cord up that way so that it doesn't run into stuff when you are driving so it ends up routed like that and I think that'll kind of stay in place while you're driving with the canopy on and stuff um, this car is cool a lot of these RTF cars come with this where it's got the switch on the speed controller so you can plug it in like this and nothing is getting power until I turn that on which is nice because you can kind of put the canopy on and then stick your finger up here and kind of grab that switch after you got your canopy on and you don't waste a second of your battery power that way so that's everything about this car I love those tires too look at that I love that like low profile tire that racing tire um, it's just a really good looking car now this is not going to be for big yumps and stuff like the monster trucks this is more of a smooth surface racer rally cars are typically raced on smooth surfaces low traction smooth surfaces like dirt roads and stuff so um, this will be a good parking lot car but you're not going to go through the grass like with your monster truck All right, before I get to the driving videos I just want to say I went out and torture tested this car I drove it on a baseball diamond with a lot of fine dust and chalk and stuff and and I drove it out on the uh, runway at the club as well which is concrete and really put it through the paces with a two cell lipo battery and I just wanted to show a couple of things about it uh, that I think you're gonna want to know alright as you can see it's getting really dirty so 
you're gonna need to watch for that. It's getting dirt all up into the shocks and everything. And it's easy to take apart and clean it, but just keep an eye on that. It's getting pretty dirty. Um, and I have already actually cleaned it once after I ran it on the baseball diamond. <laughs> and this is just from running around at the club on the runway and stuff. So, I wanted to show you one thing. It, you need to go through the manual and check the setup procedures on how to break in the differential. Like, you need to hold it down and let the wheels on the other side run, and then hold it down on the other side and let the wheels run. Um, but it tells you how to do that in the manual. And then set the gear mesh on your motor. Um, I was really surprised, but after running it on the baseball diamond with the 2S LiPo and everything, I was able to chew up the pinion gear and the plastic gear there. And I was really, really surprised to see that the pinion gear was totally chewed up. So that's the new one in there. And as you can see, it's not exactly the right size, but it is working really nicely. Um, so I, I strongly suggest checking that before you drive the car eh, too much. On mine, it was just way too tight, and that caused uh, it to wear out really, really quickly. <laughs> and it's, it's handling's pretty good. It's good enough to flip itself over. But it's it's pretty good drift car. But boy, yeah, you do that and it grips, turns itself over. Yeah, this is the best kind of surface to run it on, I think. Just, you know, concrete or something. It, in the dirt, it's, it's pretty um, drifty. See? It drifts at low speed in the dirt. And it don't like going over big bumps like that. <laughs> I love that brake. <laughs> cool, huh? Like maybe with some better tires it wouldn't do that, but yeah. you know, that's the way it kind of spins around in the reverse direction. That's got to be hard on the differential though. <laughs> the brakes are awesome. Yeah, I think it's cool. Love that. <laughs> You can turn at full speed if you don't turn it very much, but if you crank the wheels all the way at full speed, it's going to flip. Like that. Like that. And that's pretty reliable. It, it definitely is going to flip if you turn it at full speed and you don't let up. And it, it leans in real tight. That's the tire rubbing up against the canopy. 
when it gets a little loaded up. <laughs> and it might be some of my tires coming loose and stuff a little bit too. Cool, huh?